I spent 100 days in V-Rising, a vampire open world survival game, and my goal here is to defeat all the V-Bloods and Shardbearers, which are the bosses in the game. And here's what happened. Day 1, I woke up from my slumber, and the very first monster I saw is a skeleton. I'm gonna destroy this thing and use its bones to craft myself some weaponry. With the newly crafted bone sword, I have destroyed even more skeleton. I then crafted myself this bone ring, which increases my spell attack power, and also some armor. And after killing a bit more skeletons, I decided to head out. I'm going for the east side of the Farbane Woods. And as I explored the forest, I saw a wolf chasing down a deer, so I quickly drained it from its blood. And I got a 6% creature attribute from it. And in this game, there are a bunch of attributes depending on what monster you suck blood from. And for creatures, it's creature. <laughs> there are a bunch of stuff like warrior, rogue, scholar, brute, and other blood types. While I was looking for a suitable base, I decided to just farm some resource for now. This resource will be really valuable in setting up our castle. I also encountered my very first human enemies. They were poachers. They had an arrow and some clubs to whack me with, but well, I was stronger than them. With my vampiric powers, they were no match. While I was on my way to the area I mark as a place I would set up my base, I was being chased by a V-Blood, the Alpha Wolf. The very first boss will be fighting. But for now, I need to set up camp. Then I will vanquish it. I found this area very suitable as it was in the middle of Farbane Woods. Because we needed to explore all around the map for wherever the V-Bloods are lurking. So yeah, I made the castle hard and we'll start cleaning up the area. I chopped up some wood, placed some floors, and also wooden walls as I needed to complete some quests in order to unlock new recipes. For now, I made a sawmill so I can process all the wood into planks. I also made myself a blood press. This is going to be very useful for extracting some blood essence from the hearts of our enemies. Also, there are like more valuable hearts where we can get greater blood essence instead of those little marbles right here. I then crafted myself the workbench where I reinforced most of my gears and upgraded my armors to some plated armor set and a blood rose ring. After all that preparation, it was time to face off with the alpha wolf. Now I'm stronger than ever. Well, I need some help with my aim though. <laughs> And with that, the Alpha Wolf has been slain. And now we have the ability to transform ourselves into a wolf. We now have a better movement or mobility throughout the map because of this wolf form we have. Alright, so say it with me. Awoo! So before heading to the next V-Blood target, I decided to expand my base a bit. I was thinking that if I had my place covered in wooden walls, it would have a roof. But it actually doesn't work that way. It needs to be stone walls. So yeah, that was a bummer. So for now, I had this mist to protect me from the sun. And I removed all my walls. I just need to wait till I have like stone walls. So for now, since there were a bunch of copper rocks lying around, I made myself some copper axes from the harvest I got. I then went to the copper mines so I can gather more copper, so I can make more weapons and other stuff and also kill the V-Blood that's in here guarding this place. After I was satisfied with my copper collection, I will fight Errol the Stonebreaker. And hey, that's him. He engaged the fight with me. Anyways, since I have a copper axe now, I have unlocked my first primary skill, the Q skill. 
Currently, I do like a wide arc of slashes, which also increases my attack speed and pushes me forward. Anyways, here's the fight. Defeating Errol, I unlocked the ability called Aftershock. It's the attack he did where he cracks the ground and purple flashes of effects burst around. I also had the ability to make a big stash, a bigger chest than my normal chest. Anyway, since I was very close to Rufus, the foreman, I'm gonna target him next. Since I had a lot of materials, I started making a bunch of chests so I can start organizing my items very early in the game because it's gonna be annoying later on if we have more items. Expanded my base some more and cleaned up some more. I didn't really have the grinder right now. Basically, the grinder is something that would make stone blocks which is required to make stone walls. And I don't have that right now. I need to defeat a certain v bot, I think. Or I need to get the recipe for some wheat whetstones. I don't know how to pronounce it. Whetstones. Anyways, while I was cleaning up, there was actually a trend living in my base. Uh, the skull icon means it's too high leveled for me. But that won't stop me from killing this thing. And yes, you've been defeated, my friend. For the weapon of choice, I made myself a copper spear and mace. I don't really use them, but for this run, I'm gonna try it out. Alright, after gearing up and I was done with my shenanigans at the base, I faced up with Rufus. Honestly, the spear was pretty fun. Anyways, I defeated Rufus and now I unlocked the woodwork bench, making me able to craft a fishing pole, as well as the ability to make myself a crossbow. So we unlock Blood Rage. I don't really use Blood Rage that much, but Blood Rage is nice just to have that extra attack speed and movement speed. But it's always safer to have a counter skill like a Blood Rite if you can't like outrun any attacks or skill shots. Anyways, I went to this merchant site, the shady merchants camp, and I bought a bunch of books for a merciless items because I need an upgrade on my gear so I can get stronger. But I don't really have enough coins. I can only buy like two. Anyway, since Keely the Frost Archer was near, I decided to fight her before going home to base and resupply or upgrade my gears. Just when Keely was about to die, what is he doing here? I have to skedaddle away, run, run, run. Oh my god. 
Just wait until like I have very good items and that Tristan guy will fall to the ground. Anyways, free match time since it's already night time. And let me skip to the part where she's almost damaged and does her desperation move. Didn't last really long. But anyways, we defeated Keely and we have unlocked a new spell called Frostbat, which I don't really use. Not my type. Also unlocked the ability to make a tannery so we can process our animal hides or the rug hides into something better like the leather so we can make like a scarf or other stuff that requires leather. Oh look, I got myself a hat <laughs> from this golden chest. So I went home, made myself the tannery, and then slapped in all my rugged hide to process into leather. And with this, I can pretty much make the new armor set, the complete armor set. Yeah. I also made the merciless armor, pants, and boots. The only thing missing is the gloves. As for the axe, I still need the whetstones. So I wasted no time going for the next V-Blood, which would be Gorsewine the Ravager. And here he is at the desecrated graveyard. I had to back away a bit as it was crowded with the undead and I don't think I can tank everything they throw at me. So I had to kill them one by one. And now we engage the fight. That was honestly a very annoying fight because I was fighting him at the narrow area of the stairs. So I should have lured him outside or something. But anyways, we got him. And we got a new skill called the Bone Explosion which I don't really prefer as well. So anyways, I also got the ability to make a tomb. And with the tomb, we can summon stuff like skeletons and other monsters that drop various loots. The next V-Blood Grayson the Armorer, I had to invade a stronghold of bandits the, they were annoying especially the shield guy because when he brings his shield up you get stunned if you hit him and you, you actually have no choice if you don't notice and there's also those assassins that stuns you well anyways i took care of them after killing off almost everyone in the camp i went and fought grayson the armorer in my camp not for long Can't stop me! Hammer you out! I've got the tool for the job! Gonna hammer you out! Gonna hammer you out! For the job, hammer you out. Gonna hammer you out. Hooking with a spear is really fun. 
So we defeated Grayson the Armorer. Defeating Grayson, we have unlocked the ability to make a whetstone on our furnace. I then went to the Shady Merchants Camp again to buy the Merciless Stalker boots since I had enough money now. I also bought a bunch of potions like the Brew of Ferocity and the Enchanted Brew. This gave like spell power and attack power which would be very beneficial for our power level. Since I now had whetstone, I could make myself a grinder now. Now we can make some stone blocks. So finally, we can have walls on our castle. Totally forgot to make myself a scarf, the traveler's wrap, so I made one now. And with the stone blocks on hand, I can finally place walls on my base. I noticed that Lydia was close to the base, so I decided to hunt her down. This was Lydia, the Chaos Archer. She has one of my favorite spells in the game once we defeat her. And with that, we have defeated Lydia. We have unlocked Chaos Volley. It fires two orbs of shadow or chaos. And then, yeah, that's my favorite spell in the game. Also, we have unlocked the ability to make a leather working station, making us able to craft small bags as well as Devourer. And what it does, it, it basically salvage our old equipments or something we don't need into materials. After that fight with Lydia, I had enough stone block to actually cover a bunch of the sides at my base. Once you cover the entire base with walls and a door, you can finally have a roof. So we are now protected from the sun. We have an actual base now. I just need to change the flooring to make it look better and not dirty like this. I also need to rearrange stuff so everything is conveniently close together and it would not look that bad. Oh yeah, I crafted myself a teleporter. Now I can teleport to areas with teleport gates. I also got myself a new bed, the stone coffin. Yeah. Now I wake up energized. It doesn't really affect anything in the game. I also made a servant coffin right here. Then I raided this random camp of bandits so I can catch one to put in my coffin. I then made the leather working station to make some small bags for herb, gems, and papers. Adding more inventory space to our inventory. I also made the devourer so we have something to salvage our old gears or stuff we don't need. I then made myself a fishing pole if ever I see something in the water that's splashing so I can catch some fish. Fish are pretty useful in this game. I then made my way to the Sulphur Quarry to defeat Clive the Firestarter, the next V-Blood. It was still daytime so I need to have cover on my head like this giant rock right here that's giving me some shadows. Anyways, I hate this fight. I mostly hate enemies that have bombs because they're annoying. And with that, we have defeated the fire starter. We have unlocked the ability to make some sulfur. Also, we can now make an alchemy station where we can make our potions, our buff potions, and everything else that's great. 
Basically, this bubbling thing right here is what you see if it's available to be fished with using your fishing pole. It The animation usually goes like this. When it bursts into bubbles or something, you can pull it out and you can get some fish. Anyway, since Polora the Fey Walker was close by, I challenge her to a Mortal Kombat. And we have defeated the Thay Walker. I gained the ability called Spectral Wolf. It basically throws a wolf spirit. With some extra cash, I bought more recipes. I then built myself some growing plots and I'm gonna plant all the seeds I've gained throughout the game. Uh, basically, the seeds, once you harvest them, don't disappear. They stay wherever you plant them. We just have to wait for them to fully grow again. So this is why having a lot of seeds is great because you can just harvest stuff at your base again and again. You don't need to go through the places where the herbs grow or something. I then summoned a creature called the Putrid Rat. It's basically the next V-Blood we need to target. And once we defeat this rat, we gain the ability to transform into a rat. And oh my god, I'm suffering damage there. I then entered this cemetery where Nicholas the Fallen is located. I had to battle a bunch of uh, undeads before we can actually face the boss. And after reaching the top of the cemetery, I have found Nicholas the Fallen.
guy was actually annoying to deal with since I didn't really have that much skills that does AoE and he summons a bunch of undead followers. So yeah, at the very least, we got him. We can now make a paper press and to make paper, we only need some fibers and some sawdust from sawing the logs in the sawmill. And the paper is used to discover new stuff at the research table so we can make a bunch of new stuff. And since I had gained some morning lilies and grave dust from visiting the cemetery, I made myself the Ring of Dawn Runner, giving me some movement speed and I like that. I then went to the lower right side of Farbane Woods to find the bear cave where the ferocious bear is located and upon defeating this guy, we will unlock the ability to transform into a bear and becoming a bear means we can destroy large rocks or any obstacles that blocks our way. There's basically a giant gate that's protecting the final boss for part 1 and we need the bear form for that. And with that, we have defeated the bear. And because I have the bear form now, I wasted no second to raid the bandit stronghold right here. And using the bear form, I smashed through the walls. Now I can go straight to the boss. Well, not until I killed every mob in the area because you know, they're good for items. After defeating all his minions, I went and faced Quincy, the bandit king. I need to defeat his guard first or they'll be annoying later. And with that, I have defeated the Bandit King. I have gained an ability called Merciless Charge, our very first ultimate. And we unlock the Smithy and the Tailoring Bench so we can craft the next gears like the Iron Weapons and the Hollow Fang Armor Set as well as we unlock the recipe for Iron. Now our next target is Beatrice the tailor so we can make the loom which is required to make some cotton yarns. Yes, cotton yarns. And with the cotton yarns, we can make the tailoring bench and make some hollow fang set. So yeah, that was part one of all the V-Bloods we need to kill. So that was still day 17. We have a long days ahead before we face the final bosses. I have replaced all my floorings in the castle into something more prettier. I then expanded my castle a little bit more as I know we're gonna have new stations that we need to place. My castle is now very big and spacious. I then went out and raided a bunch of farms so I can get their treasures like cottons and cotton seeds and a bunch of other stuff. I also harvested a bunch of sunflower and these will be very useful later on. 
And afterwards, I grabbed the horse and went to the haunted iron mines. My primary focus right now would be to gather a bunch of iron ores so I can craft iron weapons. So it'd be a plus if I can kill both of the bee bloods inside by making them fight each other. It's very chaotic here, so I try my best to like avoid conflict and just focus on mining the irons, but it's never peaceful as a vampire. And that's Meredith, the Bright Archer. She's too high level for me, so I'm just gonna run away. While I was minding my own business, I found the best opportunity to make these two fight. So I threw out a spell to Craig, the undead general, and lured him to Meredith. And I will just skedaddle out and let them fight each other and come back once they're done. <laughs> just lie awake from afar and wait for them to finish their fight. Then I will join in and destroy the remaining victor. I'm the third party in this apex fight. And finally, it was go time. Meredith was dying. I am tired. I can't keep fighting. I feel stronger. And with that, I got two birds with one stone. Higher level than me and way advanced than Beatrice the Taylor. And by killing Craig, the Undead General, I have unlocked the ability to make Reapers, basically Death Sights. As for Meredith, I have the ability to make Holy Resistance Potions, which we don't really need right now. So anyways, after a long day of hard work getting the iron ores, I went home to process all of them. I then crafted the smithy so I can make iron weapons. For now, I made the iron axe, the reaper, and the crossbow. Just three weapons would be enough. I mostly just use the primary one, which would be currently the axe, and then the secondary one, the reaper, which has really good AoE. And it's really good against undead. I raided this village as it was time to finally fight Beatrice, but I got distracted by this 95% creature blood of this pig, and Beatrice is just there walking around. Anyways, it was time to kill Beatrice so we can have uh, the ability to make some loom. She's not really hard because she doesn't fight back, and it would be really annoying if I didn't kill a bunch of soldiers already in this town. But since we're already done, we're just waiting for Beatrice to die. Alright, if you notice, I had a axe throw skill. Basically, having the iron weapon, I have obtained my secondary weapon skill, which basically is the axe throw. It's pretty neat. Very strong. It can stun enemies and it's a range attack. Since I killed Beatrice, I just plundered the area before leaving. After I got home, I crafted a loom and slapped in all my cotton so it can process into a cotton yarn. And while waiting for the cotton yarns to finish, since I had a bunch of copper coins, I went shopping to the shady merchant's camp. I then built myself a tailoring bench where I'm gonna make my new armor set, the hollow fang set. I had the material to craft the whole set alongside a hunter's cloak. I also crafted something called a castle throne. This is basically where I sit like a king and command my servant to go work and hunt for me. But basically each servant has a power level and Jared, the very first servant we had, doesn't really have that much power level. I don't really have good items to give him, just my oldies. Anyways, for the next V-Blood, I targeted Christina, the Sun Priestess.
conviction! I will show you discipline! This is my conviction! Shining blessings! He wasn't really that hard to beat, it's just that there were so many random mobs around her that it was annoying to fight. Upon defeating Christina, I can now make some wool threads, but yeah, I already have a lot of those, so I don't need to. Now it's time to take our revenge to Tristan the Vampire Hunter, because he disturbed us earlier with Kelly. After searching for Bane Woods for a while, I finally found Tristan, the Vampire Hunter. I'm gonna take care of him after I take care of these minions. I freaking hate the fire man, it hurts so much. You just step on it once and you're burning to death. So after defeating Kristen, we can now craft some greater blood essences. And also the ability to make some great swords. But I won't be using great swords. Not a fan. My next target was Vincent the Frostbringer and he had two lackeys with him. But uh, that's no problem, they're pretty weak. Coming 
I feel a chill coming out. And with that, we have defeated Vincent, and now I can craft some reinforced planks and also some prison cells. These prison cells are gonna be very useful once we have the dust color or dust bringer. Once we unlock the scorch tone. I made about three for now. I'm not sure how many good quality blood I'll encounter, but surely we will use that prison to uh, imprison them. The next target was Leandra, the Shadow Priestess. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. Anyways, we went to the Church of the Damned. It's full of high-leveled undead and also those dang necromancers who summons a lot of skeletons. So I made my way through the top, looting a bunch of Scorch Stones from these corpses. Well, they're already corpse. But anyways, I got a lot of Scorch Stone and I reached the place where Leandra is. After taking care of all these minions, I begin my fight. Leandra defeated, I can now craft a dust color. Basically, what it does is when you dominate someone as a servant, you can teleport them back to your prison at home and i can also now make a artisan table so i made an artisan table at the base i can now make myself a scorch stone pendant but i don't have enough scorch stone so yeah and i then crafted about 10 dust color i'm not sure how many good blood i will encounter but it's always nice to have a lot in the inventory I then set up an area where I summon a lot of skeleton bishops so I can farm scorch stones from them. You basically just need a tomb, some gem dust, and sunflowers and it'll, it will keep spawning these bishops and they have a chance to drop some scorch stones so that's what I'm hoping for for this farm. My next target was the shadow blade. It's basically this guy hidden right here. If it was daylight, I was kind of not sure if I should engage this battle, but I engaged it anyways. Into the dark. Ending. 
With the Shadow Blade defeated, I have now unlocked the ability to craft slashers. It's my favorite weapon in the game because you're like an assassin. You have so many immunity frames with the skills. Also, I was able to make a small coin purse. I can now carry about silver coins so I don't worry about being damaged by silver. And also the ability to turn myself into a human so I can now go to the human merchant camp so I can buy a bunch of books. So there's a lot I gained from killing the shadow blade and this was really beneficial. I spared no time and crafted myself some iron slasher straight away. I also made myself the small coin purse. Now I can carry the silver coins. <laughs> I then went to the quartz quarry to gather a bunch of quartz and also to defeat the next V-Blood, Wrestle the Glass Blower. She's probably one of my most hated enemy in this game. I don't know, she's very strong for this early level or I just can't dodge her skills properly. That was a clutch. And also, I think it would have been better if I had some fire resistant brew. I guess that was the problem why I was having a hard time with her. With Grethel defeated, I now have the ability to craft glass, glass bottles, and blood rose bottles. Basically, a better potion than this current potion I have, which is the blood rose leather thingy. Before going home, I mined a bunch of quartz first. Going to my bishop farm, I really need to make like strong servants to kill these instead of myself. Cause it's kind of a pain in the butt to always like try and kill these bishops. I'd rather have some servants kill this instead. I headed to the haunted iron mines again as I needed more iron ores. I then made some reinforced plank as I wanted to upgrade my castle heart to level 3. I don't exactly remember when I got this guy, but it's a warrior 100%, so I'm taking care of this guy. I, I don't know how I can interact with this person for some reason, but actually it was just, you know, like the wrong side. So yeah, I extracted a lot of blood from this guy, fed it fish, and extracted more blood, fed it fish, rinse and repeat until it, it died. I just reached the max. Misery, I guess. I I'm so sad. I could have feed it like the rainbow fish or something. I got like seven bottles of warrior blood, 100%. So I'm, I'm happy with this. Yeah, thank you, man. You will be remembered. I am so strong with this stats now. I then gave my servant a bunch of new gears so I can have him farm for me instead of myself. Yeah, for now, he's gonna gather a bunch of cottons for me. Those cottons are gonna be for my future servants. And look at this, a 95% rogue. Yeah, to the prison you go. You're gonna be my blood source in the future as well. I gotta feed it with a mutant grill and make it 100%. Now hopefully it doesn't fail. I then went to the forbidden tower to defeat Maha, the dark seven or Maja. How do you pronounce this? The exquisite suffer! 
Firing of a paper cut! Maha defeated, we can now make a study. So we can now unlock the new recipes from the book we can buy on this middle tier. We also unlock the recipe for scrolls. Scrolls are what is needed to unlock a bunch of new stuff on the study. So I then made the study at base, grab some books I already had, unlock a merciless halfang vest, the knife, and some garlic resistant potions. I'll need to go to the merchant's area so I can buy more books. Basically here at the Donley farmer's market. So I turned myself into a human since I had that power. I'm kind of glad that the Iron Reaper is here. And yeah, I just need to buy the other armor set I need. But I ran out of coins. So I only was able to buy the armor set books. I was mad and annihilated the merchant's camp. Since I was poor, I decided to raid a lot of villages and looted whatever their house could supply me. I was hopeful that I could find a bunch of silver coins but well i'm not really that lucky upon returning home i upgraded all my armor to the merciless hollow fang set this is where the fish shines after extracting the oil from the fish you're left with a fish bone and you can use it to craft buff potions i then made a bunch of servant coffins as it was time to get a bunch of new servants to work for me I basically needed those giant brutes to take care of the summoned bishops. I then continued raiding villages for their money as I was very poor. I really wanted some merciless weapons before I continue fighting some bloods. With enough money, I went back to the merchant's camp to buy the merciless iron reaper recipe. It's honestly pretty sad that I didn't have any merciless lashers, but this is good enough. I upgraded my reaper to the merciless iron reaper and it was time to fight the next V blood. And since I was getting more and more items, I upgraded my chest into some bookcases which can store more items than the iron chest. Then captured this brute as surely it will do a good job killing those bishops and sent him home to the prisons. I then went back to the Church of the Dam as I needed more Scorch Stones. I wanted to craft a new accessories and I needed a lot of Scorch Stone for that. And I just wanted a peek at this stronghold but I didn't think I would encounter a really good quality brute. 98% brawler. I'm gonna make him another source of blood in my base. I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture him. I'm gonna make sure he's alive. So yeah, another source of blood if ever our warrior bottles run out. As I was heading home, I could not believe my eyes. I actually found a 99% brute. What is this luck? But why is it all the brute ones? But dang, I'm just happy to get like good quality blood stock. So to the prison you go. Once we unlock the... I don't know what it's called again. The irradiation gruel. I will make this guy into 100%. For the low quality brutes, I turned them into servants. I then crafted a bunch of blood rose potion. I will never run out of these. Finally, I made the pendant of dawn runner as I wanted the movement speed. So this is basically my scorched stone farm. I basically just put two of my servants inside and have them whack the bishops to death. With all the preparations done, it was finally time to continue our V-Blood hunt and defeat Terra, the Geomancer.
And now the Geomancer is dead. I now have the ability to make the gem cutting table as well as a new ultimate called the Spectral Guardian. I'll be using it a lot because it makes me very tanky. This ultimate basically summons a golem and it shields me for some damage. It's pretty good to like go all in on an enemy as I summon the golem and don't really care if I receive damage or not and just attack them to death. And right, I don't know why, but I'm very lucky with the brutes. I even found like a 92% brute. Another brute to the family. I want another one. I want a warrior or a rogue blood, not brute brute. But brute is fine, I guess. They have like more healing capabilities and their blood qualities. Anyways, our next target was in this icy mountain. Frostmau, the mountain terror. Pretty called Fr Frostmau. By defeating Frostmo, I gained the ability to craft medium-sized bags, meaning more inventory space for us. I also got the ability called Frost Nova, but I'm yeah, not really a fan. So my next target now is the second Vampire Hunter, Jade right. the Vampire Hunter. Let's Defeating her would mean we can unlock the recipes for pistols. One shot. Dance for me. You're done. One shot, one kill. Dance for me. Not only pistols, but we also have the ability to craft primal blood essence, which is useful for high level gear and high level stations and stuff. I also got a new ultimate, but not really a fan of it. It makes me very vulnerable as it's like if you notice her shoot a lot of like chaos bullets, that's basically the ult. I then raided a village first to get a bunch of money again before I went home. I also gained a book for the Merciless Iron Slashers and I'm very happy with this. I can finally have the Merciless version of the Slasher. For the next V-Blood, I'll need to go to a church. So I need some Holy Resistant Potion or else I'm gonna die to Holiness. So I buffed up myself before heading inside. Decided to plunder the entire area first before facing Rachel the Shepherd. And once that was done, it was time for combat. I will show you the will of light.
before the light. And with Rachel defeated, I have unlocked another ultimate called the Crimson Beam. I would use it, but I already have a preferred ultimate right now. And I also unlocked the Jewel Crafting Table as well as the Ancestral Forge where we can make like pretty rare items. Basically the broken items, we repair them using our merciless weapons. But even though I have this new stations, I don't have the material to craft the weapon themselves. I then went shopping for some potions and some seeds with my remaining silver coins. So I made the jewel crafting station and with this I can make those trinket thingies you put on the skill slot so they have additional buffs. I then remembered to make those medium bags expanding my inventory even further. The next target was Octavian, the militia captain, but I decided to kill everyone in the base first so no one will disturb us on our match. And once that was done, I engaged in combat with Octavian. With that, I have defeated Octavian and I have unlocked a new ultimate called the Raging Tempest. It's a very cool ultimate and it deals like magic damage. I also unlocked the recipes for some Dawnthorn Regalia. As you can see, planting seeds is the best since you can just harvest a lot of stuff here in the base. Alright, at one point at Rachel's fight, there was actually a 98% scholar. That's her right there in the prison. So yeah, I made a bunch more prison as I feel like I'm gonna encounter more high quality blood enemies. So they're a really good source of blood. Next, I went into Gloomvert for the very first time. It was already very chaotic here. There were like mutant golems, zombies, I don't know, fighting like people with lightning powers. And yeah, this is the Raging Tempest. Amazing, right? It's actually more amazing against bosses when there's only like one person because this ultimate like uh, divides the damage between whoever is inside. Anyways, I was on my way to Ziva the engineer and let me just say this guy with a flamethrower is one of the most annoying enemies here. Well, aside from the giant mecha thingies we'll encounter later on, this one is one of the annoying enemies. Anyways, I reach where Ziva the engineer is and immediately engage the fight. Pull up, pull up. 
exactly what I need. Now this is fun! And with that, I have defeated Ziva. I now unlock the ability to make the Fabricator. And with the Fabricator, I can make Empty Canister where I'm gonna put all those yellow sludge in Gloom Root to make Radium Alloys. So yeah, this is the Fabricator. And with some iron and glass, I can make some canisters. Empty canisters. I then filled it all with a sludge. And started processing some radium alloy so I can make the new weapon upgrades I need. But first, I'd like to upgrade my castle because there's a certain skill I really want. The dominate mount. The dominate mount basically gives you a skill where you can dominate a mount just as the name implies. So basically, your horse is forever alive. You can summon it anywhere you want. And this horse I have right here is one of the best stat horses I found throughout the game. So I turned it into a vampire horse. I don't know how to label this. But anyways, I dominated the mount. Now I have the ability to make a vampire horse saddle as well. This gives plus one movement speed and plus one max acceleration. I totally forgot what was the button for recalling the horse. I didn't know T would kill the horse or release it and now i don't have a horse anymore there's a horse there but the stats is so bad so i went to the horse track to find a very suitable horse with good stats and i need to craft another vampire saddle for it well i was on my way to angram the purifier i decided to raid this village first as i needed a bunch of items that they have on their containers or their houses this wasn't the plan, but sure. Let's fight Domina the Blade Dancer first. But actually, there were too many mobs. I need to run away for now. I swear to god, I'm just surrounded right now. They're like everywhere, man. I, I gotta take care of them one by one or else I'll just die. Anyways, after I took care of the lackeys, it's time to fight Domina again.
That was honestly so close. Anyways, we defeated Domina. So I continued with my hunt and decided to fight Angram the Purifier before returning home. Oh look, some friendly mutated guys wanted to help us, so I'll let them fight. And with Engram defeated, we have unlocked the ability to make some Irradiant Gruel. What the Irradiant Gruel does is if you feed it to a prisoner, there's like a 35% chance it will mutate them and they go wild and just, you know, fight you. Uh, but the best effect it has is that it has a chance to increase their blood rate by 1-2% to 2 and that's what I'm gonna use to increase the blood rate of my 99% Brute and my 98% Scholar. Hopefully they don't mutate. And since we have some Radium Alloys now, I made myself some blue named items with my Ancestral Forge. It's the Crook Warsight. I only had a recipe for the slasher and the sight, so I don't really have a crossbow. But I do have a pistol though. So I decided to just have pistols as my range weapon. I succeeded on making my brute 100%. I was kind of nervous, but at least now we have 100% brute. Let's go. So I check what the brute blood actually did. It's more of like life leech, attack speed, and more heals with movement speed. It's pretty nice actually. I like the brute blood. But the warrior blood makes me very strong though. Anyways, I went to the cursed forest and defeated the old wanderer. I didn't know that I had a recording on pause. I only noticed when I already defeated him. Anyways, by defeating the old wanderer, you get a cape that will prevent you from getting lost in the forest or preventing you from getting the curse of the forest. The Curse of the Forest basically makes it so that you can't see wherever you're going. Only a small circle around you. And you can't even check your map. So what I did before fighting the Wanderer was mark the teleporter. As you can see there, the marker. Basically, that's my safe spot to go home once I'm done killing him so I can make a cape back home. But yeah, the Wanderer is very annoying to fight because like there's a bunch of monsters in this forest. Like, yeah, the bear right there. And the Wanderer only runs around like... Not really, he also binds you to a spot so the monsters can like attack you. He also does an attack that can incapacitate your stunts you. And yeah, overall it's very annoying. And with enough materials on hand, I have crafted the Shroud of the Forest. Now this will prevent me from getting cursed and I will know the way towards the forest. Our next target is a giant spider which enables us to make like a silk. And that area is also full with silkworms we can make silk out of. So we'll get our new armor set once we defeat the boss. So I raided the spider nest full of spiders. They're pretty tanky. I kind of hate them for that. But yeah, we got this. There are even those like mother spiders that have like babies on their back. Those Basically those 
spiders that look like they have ticks on their back. They're really scary to look at, but yeah, they don't really attack that much. They just keep laying eggs, but they're very annoying because they keep laying those with baby spiders and I hate them. After getting inside the most deepest part of the cave, I have found Ongora, the Spider Queen, and have engaged in combat. It's honestly scary how I've been like clutching these fights. I'm dying again. The, these guys are getting stronger and stronger as we progress. I just need the new armor set to have more survivability. And with the spider queen killed, we have unlocked silk. So I made a bunch of silk and pristine leather. I would need this to make the armor set. I made a mistake regarding the silk. I was actually making some carpet rolls because I did not notice I had some cloth in this loom. I needed to make another loom if I don't want to repeat this same mistake again. So I slowly made my armor set while waiting for the other silk to finish. And after that was done, I went to the cursed swamp to fight some frogs and their big boss, Big Frog, the Duke of Balaton.
With the Duke of Balaton defeated, I can now make medium coin purse and some coins at the Fabricator. I also unlocked the Toad form, which I don't really use. I continued on with my adventure and went straight ahead to the Cursed Village to gather some ghost crystals. Also some Scorch Stones from these Banshees. There were a lot of ghosts in this area, but yeah, they're not really a problem. I guess only the Banshee is the most annoying one here because it can cast fear on us. I first killed all the ghost residents in this area before facing the V-Blood. This guy wasn't my target, but since he was nearby, sure, why not? This was Cyril, the cursed myth. I was supposed to, to be killing Fallrot, the soul taker, but... Well, anyways, I already engaged a fight with Cyril. That was a clutch. Anyway, with Cyril defeated, I have unlocked the Anvil, as well as a really cool skill called the Ray Spear, as well as uh, the ability to make dark silver ingots now. Am I saying ingot right? I then raided the village where Falrot the Soul Taker was. And after I was done with the village, I went and fought Falrot the Soul Taker. Oh. 
And with Fallrot defeated, I can now make some Spectral Dust. So we need to kill one more V-Blood and we're done with part 2 of the V-Blood bosses. So I raided this village full of werewolves. This is where the last V-Blood for part 2 is located. Wilfred the village elder is here. And man, these guys are tough. I swear, I should have killed them one by one. But it's always nice to like kill them in a group. Makes it like easier and not waste time. So after killing and looting all the houses, I engaged the fight with Wilfred. And with the village elder defeated or the werewolf chief, we now have access to make a silver resistant potion. We'll be needing this to mine some silver ores for the dark silver ingots. We're gonna need the ingots to make new weapons. I then made some silver resistant potion so I can start mining some silver ores. But before that, I establish a base just beside the mine so I can come here and store my silver ores. I'll also be installing a teleporter so I can just teleport back home. But I don't really have the materials to make a teleporter. So for now, I'm just gonna be using the other way gate available in the map. I had to access the silver mine atop the mountain. There was a secret path right here. As the front gate was closed and the only way to get inside was this area right here. Yeah, I started wrecking havoc inside the mine so I can start mining some silver ores. I have a silver resistant potion ready on my inventory that I'm planning to use once I take care of these guys. So I mined a bunch of silver ore, only amount I can hold because I only have a resistance from silver at around 50 I believe. Yeah, so I can't carry more than what I have the resistance for. So all I can do right now is just mine this and then go away from the gate. I also found myself a 95% worker. So yeah, why not? I, I sent him to prison. I sneakily opened the gate while I was enshrouded in shadows with my slasher skill and went away with my horse. And once I crafted my silver weapons, I'm gonna come back here and defeat Magus the Overseer. I made the anvil and with the anvil, I had access to craft the dark silver weapons. I'm still crafting the same thing I'm using, a slasher, reaper, and a crossbow. I then went to my second base and placed a teleporter and now I can just come here anytime I want. I then went back to the silver mine to gather a bunch of silver ores and once my pockets are filled, I'll fight Sir Magus. I freed a bunch of prisoner. They will surely distract Sir Magus so I can deal a bunch of damage to him before, you know, we, we fight each other for reals. Point. 
an icy grave. Oh my god, his name was Magnus, not Magus. Anyways, with Magnus defeated the Overseer, I've unlocked the Ice Block spell as well as the Phantom Veal, a new cape that would give us more HP and resistance. Next up, I went to this area where Baron du Bonchin the Sommelier, let's call him the Sommelier is, and I engaged the fight. I had a very low amount of blood now, so I'm not sure if I can finish the fight before I ran out of blood. With the sommelier defeated, I can now craft the blood merlet amulet. It's one of the endgame amulets available. I mean part of the endgame amulet available. I even got the blood moon leggings recipe book, an upgrade to our armor set. I just now need to defeat the enemy or the v-blood that has the recipe for the research table for the high level gears, the athenium. I then raided the Harpiness. This was the next area where the V-Blood is resting, the Stormwing. I decided to defeat all the Harpies that were nearby before I engage in combat with the V-Blood. And after I annihilated everything that was nearby, I engage a fight with a Stormwing. With that, Morian has fallen, and now I can make some flawless gem at the gem cutter. It's nearby the Harpy's Nest, I went to Emberleaf Grove. Merwin the Elementalist was here, and I will engage in combat with this. Uh, she's kinda annoying to fight, but we got this. I am the fire that will cleanse Hardor, beginning with you!
I honestly did not expect to die together. <laughs> but anyway, I can come back here real quick and uh, suck the V blood out of her. I'm just so glad she didn't revive again. <laughs> Anyways, I got the blood. I call this a win because she died. Defeating the elementalist gave me the access to craft this uh, tier 3 jewels so I can enhance my skills. That's pretty good. So this is the next V-Blood, uh, Mr. Henry Blackbrew, the doctor. Uh, my loadout composes of my Chaos Volley and the Phantasmal Spear. And let's go. My pity is long to pay. Yikes, I died. Oh my god. I hate that skill of his where he pushes you to the corner. That was my bad. Totally forgot about that. After looting my items, I just decided to suck the blood of our nearby brute and fought him again. And he's dead. We now have the ability to make the Athenaeum. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But anyways, we can now unlock new recipes with the books we gained from higher tiered enemies. Wow, I got another leggings again. I hate this. <laughs> I then went to the icy mountains to the frozen cave to fight the Terror Claw.
almost burned to death because of this guy. Anyways, we've done it. We've defeated him. Now we have unlocked larger bags. So we have more inventory space. Next, I crafted the Athenaeum and unlocked a bunch of recipes that I already have. I then crafted a Phantom Seville, which I totally forgot to, but now I have it. Then I raided the town of Silverlight so I can look for some gold because I needed to buy a bunch of new books so I can upgrade my gears and armor. Then raided this temple full of really strong holy enemies and oh my god they're crazy. I almost died to minions. They're like healing non-stop. I just couldn't kill them. I need to run away for now and come back once I'm healed up or something. They're, they're too crazy for me. I, I can't. After I healed up, I came back and got my revenge. I killed them one by one, not together, because these guys together heal each other. And after that shenanigan, I decided to fight Azariel, the Sunbringer. That was actually one annoying fight because he had so many minions helping him out. But anyways, we got him. With Azariel defeated, we can now make the gold ingots. And in turn, we can make some gold sun coins as well as a larger bag for the coins. I then continued terrorizing the silver light villages as I needed more gold, more coins, more schematic, more everything. So I needed to grind at this place for a bit until I was satisfied with my loot so I can start buying stuff. I then went home and prayed for the gods of RNG to give me weapon recipes. I got a sword, an axe, a pistol, and the two great consumables, the potion of rage and the witch potion. They are basically the upgrade to the current buff potions I have. But sadly, I don't really have the materials for these. Wait, I do. I have some swamp dwellers. The only thing I don't have is the fear stinger. But I knew that the shady merchant camps have these. So I will need to visit those merchant camps and buy some fish from them. This guy had like two pieces and I'm happy with that two pieces. I can make two potions.
I also bought myself the straw hat so I can be like a Luffy. Look, I have a straw hat now. Then extracted a bunch of blood from my prisoners. I had some rainbow trout, so I wasn't really that worried about the mystery level. I kind of hate while I don't have some prisoner flooring. It would greatly reduce the damage, but what can I do? Anyhow, while I was on my way to the town to speak with the merchants and see what books they have, I kept continuing on killing and terrorizing random people along the road so I can loot their gold. I went shopping and sadly there's not a book for the weapon I want but I did buy the blood moon chest guard and gloves so I'm only missing the boots left. I also bought a bunch of amulet arc warlock. I would really like to become a magic focused character now so I'm gonna think of like giving my scholar the 98 percent scholar some irradiant gruel hoping she can reach 100 percent but first i'd extract about like four bottles of 98 percent scholar or she might die so i continued farming for gold while waiting for the merchant's goods to reset so i can try to see if i can buy any book for a slasher reaper and a crossbow hopefully for now, I decided to fight a V-Blood, Matka the Curse Weaver. She was pretty high level than me because I don't really have the Blood Moon set yet as well as the new weapons. So I'm gonna have to do my best here. She was about level 77 and I'm just 71. All I can depend on is my ability to like dodge. And I won. Hee <laughs> hee. With Matka defeated, I have unlocked the ability to make some ghost yarns. Ghost yarns are basically what's needed to make my new armor set. I'm just so happy that there's a reaper and the boots. So I'm gonna be maining the reaper for now since I have uh, no other high level weapon. 
And finally, with all materials collected, I have made the complete Blood Moon set. Only the weapon left. Actually, I didn't know that my weapon needed a gold bar to be upgraded. So I went back to the Silver Light Villages again and killed a bunch of high-leveled enemies and raided a bunch of houses to get some gold. While I was here, I decided to shop for some potions and conveniently, this NPC had some rage and witch potions. I'm happy with this. I also bought some fish on the city goods merchant. I'm doing a lot of farming because I'm nearing the end game and I just want a complete item before I do the end game. I then crafted myself a blood merlot amulet. I just needed some power cores so I can make the end game amulets. I also crafted the sanguine reaper. Since I was done gearing up, it was time to fight the Voltasia, the power master. With the Power Master defeated, I can now make some Power Cores. And with some Power Cores, I can obtain the final upgrade to the Amulet. I defeated a bunch of machines first because I needed some depleted batteries to charge so I can make the Power Cores. So these things are very annoying and tanky. I hate them, but I don't really have a choice since they're the ones that drop these as well as the ore thingy that has like scraps. So yeah, that's a problem. But anyways, they're not really that hard. They're just annoyingly tanky. The one I fear the most would be the thing that like spews electricity like this thing right here. Instead, the Gatling machine is at least manageable. But the one with the lightning blast actually can kill me. Anyways, I went to Thunderstrike Peak in order to charge the depleted batteries. I'll need to interact with these machines that like, I don't know, lure thunder <laughs> or attract thunder. So I need to interact with that, but it's guarded by a bunch of people and machines and it's very hard to actually just ignore them. And this is the laser blast I mean of lightning. Look at how much this thing hurts. I swear to god. If you don't have any space or any dodge abilities available, you might actually just die in one go. So this is how you charge batteries. So there's, for each area, there's like a three of these. And they take time for them to stop being overloaded so we can charge again. So yeah, I think it's enough to have enough power charges to make the amulet.
I kinda hate how each weapon I unlock, I unlock everything except for the weapons I want. But good thing I have some mechanical scraps or tech scraps I can make from schematics so I can try again and hope if I unlock the weapon of choice I want, the slasher. So anyways, I visited the merchant again and he had the slashers. Let's go. Before I went to base, I decided to charge a bunch more batteries, just avoiding everything here. But yeah, well, yeah, mm, there's so many of them. But anyways, that was the plan. I just avoid everything because I don't really have time to fight these guys and I don't need their loot anymore. I just wanted to collect my batteries and go on with my life. So that was the plan here. The slashers are very useful for this as I had cloak ability. So that was done. I crafted a bunch of power core from the fabricator. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna be the magic type. So the amulet of choice for me would be the arc warlock, which offered like spell critical chance and spell crit damage. I then crafted the slashers and now I'm so ready to defeat the final V bloods that are, are waiting for my arrival. Second to the last of V-Blood was Night Marshal Sticks, the Sunderer. I had to run away and heal up before I re-engage with the fight again. This time I won't let him run away. And I have defeated Sticks, and he didn't run away. I have now the ability to make some Onyx tier as well as the ability to turn myself into a bat, having a very convenient ability to move around the map. So before we fight the final V-Blood, I'm gonna make myself the last tier weapon, the legendary orange glowing weapon, and I need 4 Onyx tier for that. And it's not really easy to find or make, but we got this. Gathered a bunch of batteries again so I can make more power core as the Onyx needed power core. I also grab a bunch of sludge filled canister as it needs iridium alloy as well. I just need some spectral dust and gold ingots left as well as the blood merlot thingies. I just need to capture one poor human and extract four bottles of blood merlot. So I went and raided the silver light people again to get their gold. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of farming involved in this. But since we're at the final V-Blood now, I want to get the best gear before fighting it. And after collecting a bunch of materials, I finally had enough to make four Onyx here. 
The weapon I decided to craft was the Master's Assassin's Eviscerator. It has 6 bonus spell power, 14% spell crit chance, and 6%, I mean 4% spell life leech. And it also inflicts a weaken. I am now a certified assassin magician with all the spell power and spell abilities I have. Day 100, the final day for battle with Solaris the Immaculate. I have buffed up with the Rage, the Witch, and the Holy Resistant Flask. And now I'm on my way to claim my victory over the land. The last V Blood on our list. And I shall engage in Mortal Combat. There are still some of you rats left. Damnation! I'll slay you all! And with that, we have vanquished the last of V-Blood we need to kill, Solaris. So that's our 100 day journey. But actually, there's more. We still need to defeat the three shard bearers. Haha, so you think it was the end, but it was not the end yet. Alright, after upgrading the castle heart to level 5, we unlock something called the Eye of Twilight. And upon crafting the eye, we are now shown the location of the shard bearers. There's three of them. My first target for now will be the winged terror. And if you notice, I have a 98% scholar blood on my veins. It basically does a lot of really good mage buff, like increasing my spell power, also spell leech, and cool, reduce cooldown, and also a chance to cast for free. So anyways, here's the fight.
that was a pretty lengthy fight because actually you need to defeat these guys with multiple people it's what the description says like three or more vampires but anyways we got it one thing i hate about this though you can't change to a bat form wolf or any form you want you can't use any vampire powers you just need to walk home you can't ride a horse towards your base but i can teleport with it but it's very far to the teleporter well i'm just really glad i had a convenience of bat form but now we have to run towards that place we need to bring the shard to anyways i got a new ultimate called the frost of vortex it's actually pretty cool look at this it's the same ultimate that the boss did also with the soul shard i can make this a monument where I can harness the power and with this I gained like resistance to silver and fire by 50 10 spell power and some skill spell crit chance by 5% that's crit that's pretty crazy honestly for the next shard bearer I'm gonna fight the behemoth That was Gore Crusher the Behemoth. I almost died. So yeah, anyways, we won. That's all that matters. Anyways, the last shard bearer would be Adam the Firstborn. Same shenanigans as the winged horror. I need to bring the shards to the base. I harness the power. It gave me resistance to garlic and holy, increasing my movement speed for 5% as well. As well as 20% more resource yield that I don't really need. It's now time for the last and final shard bearer, Adam the Firstborn. At last, I will make this world my own.
Well, I died. Alright, this is round two of our fight with Adam the Firstborn. Second face? What?
and that was the last shard bearer we won yes let's go so that was uh, all of the v bloods and shard bearers in the game thank you guys for watching let me just showcase this ultimate he has and here it is it basically just summons lightning all around me i'm not sure how much damage it will deal but since it's not really a targeted spell it's not probably that great and this is what the last shard looks like and the abilities it gives is physical power unresistance and melee attack speed yeah that's all guys thank you for watching our 100 days of re-rising hope you enjoyed thank you thank you don't forget to click that subscribe button if you want more 100 day videos bye now